The dental practitioner has the ultimate responsibility for patient evaluation, diagnosis, treatment, and or referral decision. The information provided here is compiled from textbooks, articles, and courses available to the profession and is provided in an advisory capacity only. Hi, I'm Renee Zurek, a splint specialist here at Great Lakes Laboratories. The TMJ screening exam is a checklist of quick and easy procedures to gather information in the event you're concerned there may be some joint or muscle issues with your patient. The exam is broken down into five sections and this brief tutorial will offer suggestions on how to gather this information and record it on the screening exam record. The occlusal assessment are things you're checking for in the patient's normal exam. Note any worn or broken teeth, fremitus, hypermobility, tooth migration, or cusp fractures. All of these can be signs of occlusal instability, bruxism, clenching, and joint issues. Many times patients are not aware of these situations and it would be good to mention to the patient that you're concerned about these symptoms. Measuring jaw opening can be achieved by using rulers, calipers, or range of motion scales, which will be shown in this example. Range of motion scales are disposable and can be included in the patient's chart. To measure maximum opening, hook the divot between the lower centrals and angle the curved part toward the patient as they open. Record the measurement of maximum opening in millimeters, and in a normal patient, this will be around 40 to 50 millimeters. The flat edge of the scale is used to measure lateral movements. Place the zero line on the lower central midline and have the patient move all the way to the right. Use the upper midline as the measurement on the ruler. Normal lateral movement is 7 to 15 millimeters. Measure the left side as well. You can also measure protrusive with the flat end. Normal protrusive is also between 7 to 15 millimeters. Also, watch for deviation of the mandible to one side or the other upon opening. This can indicate disc displacement in that joint. Since the scales are disposable, they can be included in the patient's chart and compared to new readings as the patient proceeds through their treatment plan. If you have questions about this step or any of the other exam items, feel free to call our splint specialist. Muscle palpation is an important part of TMD screenings. Muscle tenderness or enlarged muscles are almost always present if a muscle is overworked in an uncoordinated manner. This could indicate that the muscle is required to constantly hold the jaw in an avoidance pattern during closure into maximum intercuspation. It can also indicate bruxism and clenching. Before you begin, explain to the patient that you will be checking their muscles by applying light pressure. As a reference point for the patient, if light pressure is applied to the patient's forearm, explain that the patient can feel pressure, but it's not painful. Ask the patient to let you know if they experience any pain and if it's mild, moderate, or severe. Also, observe the patient's face for squinting, wincing, or body language that indicates pain. Some patients have a higher threshold for pain than others or simply don't want to tell you that they're in pain. With each of the four muscle groups, you'll be lightly pressing on the muscle in a continuous movement. Slide your fingers along the length and width of the muscle while asking the patient if they feel any tenderness. Also, try to feel any abnormality, contraction, or enlargement of the muscle. The images of the muscle groups shown here are courtesy of Vitafex, which is an invaluable patient education software package. First is the medial or internal pterygoid. It is one of the most important muscles clinically since it's the only muscle group that opens the mandible. All the other masticatory muscles are closers. The pterygoid is a thick quadrilateral muscle that can be accessed from inside the mouth behind the third molars. Ask the patient to open 10 to 15 millimeters and slide your forefinger posteriorly along the buccal surface. Palpate the muscle by pressing medially as well as posteriorly superiorly. Ask the patient if they feel any tension or tenderness and do this on both sides. The superficial masseter extends from below the cheekbone, 
down to the jaw directly over the molar region. Ask the patient to clench and hold to help you easily locate this muscle. You can palpate while the patient is clenched or relaxed. Palpate along the entire length and width while asking the patient if there is any tension or tenderness. This muscle will feel swollen or enlarged in a heavy clencher or bruxer. If this muscle is tender in the morning, that usually indicates a nighttime bruxer. Tenderness to this muscle almost always indicates some degree of occlusal interference or restriction that requires displacement of the same side condyle to achieve maximum intercuspation. Occlusal correction may or may not reduce the bruxing, but it almost always relieves the soreness in the muscle, and it certainly reduces the damage strong bruxures inflict on the dentition. The temporalis is a broad fan-shaped muscle situated at the side of the head. By asking the patient to clench, hold, and repeat, you will be able to locate the temporalis and follow its shape and form up the side of the head. Palpate along the entire length and width of the muscle while asking the patient again if there's any tension or tenderness. The temporalis is a focus of many headaches and will respond well to occlusal correction. This muscle group is also in direct opposition to the lateral pterygoid. Part of the origin of the temporalis is behind the orbit of the eye, and this can be a source of sharp pain in that area. The lateral or external pterygoids originate from the lateral pterygoid plate. It is divided into two sections, the inferior and superior. The lateral pterygoid is a short, thick muscle which functions to translate the mandible and is active on mouth opening and near final mouth closure. While palpation of the lateral pterygoid muscle is not practical, it can be tested by asking the patient to move their jaw forward while you apply pressure on the chin distally to provoke the muscle response. A sore muscle would be a positive test. Record any positive or painful muscles in the yes column of the exam record. There was a lot of explanation in this section, but after you palpate a couple patients, it will go very quickly for you. Joint sounds can be either very apparent, such as a patient reporting clicks or pops in their joints, or more subtle where a stethoscope or Doppler ultrasound instrument can be used to pick them up. Listen for crepitus, clicks or pops during slight opening and at full opening. Crepitus sounds like scratching or grating and will occur only during jaw movements. A normal joint is quiet. With the stethoscope or Doppler over one of the joints, in front and center of the ear, ask the patient to open and close slowly for about one second. Listen for crepitus on slight opening or rotation and during wide open ear translation. Record these on the exam record. Over the same joint, ask the patient to open slowly for about one second and listen this time for clicking upon slight opening or rotation and again, wide opening or translation. Record these findings on the exam record and repeat on the opposite joint. To load test, we will be using the Lucia jig or Panky jig. You could also use other types of anterior midpoint stop appliances that don't have posterior occlusal coverage. A load test will help determine if there is any intercapsular disorder or not and this can indicate if a deprogrammer can be used if the low test is negative. The Lucia jig, which is shown here, not only deprograms muscles, allowing the condyles to seat, but because it keeps the posterior teeth from touching, it releases the lateral pterygoids. Most patients will use the class one jig, but if there's too much space, about two and a half millimeters or more between the posterior teeth, the class two jig will reduce the amount of opening. In some cases, if the patient has very uneven lower incisors, the Lucia jig can be on, used on the lower arch. Paint the inside of the Lucia jig with a small amount of silicone tray adhesive and allow it to dry for one minute. Dispense AccuFlow bite registration material into the same area. Place the jig on the upper centrals and place the whale tail directly beneath the jig. Ask the patient to bite down and hold. The whale tail's job is to level and orient the jig to the occlusal plane. 
Allow the ackee flow to set for about 45 seconds. Remove the whale tail and set it aside and remove the jig. Trim off any excess ackee flow along the edges of the Lucia jig. Place the jig back in the patient's mouth and ask the patient to slide all the way forward, slide all the way back, and squeeze or clench as if they're trying to get their back teeth to touch. Ask the patient if there is any tenderness or tension. If the answer is no, the pterygoids are relaxed and the joint can support load comfortably. If the answer is yes, the patient may require an additional period of time, maybe even up to 20 minutes, to deprogram sore muscles. If after that period of time there is still pain, an intercapsular disorder may exist and use of a deprogrammer wouldn't be an option for this patient. If you want to proceed to taking a CR bite registration using the Lucia jig at this point, you can definitely do that and you can refer to our brochure covering CR bite registration. Once you have recorded the positive and negative exam findings, you can log this information along with the patient questionnaire answers onto the TMJ findings worksheet for possible treatment options according to this patient's condition. For more information regarding the TMJ findings worksheet and patient questionnaire, refer to the patient screening guide video in this section of our website. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to contact us if you would like us to send you any of the tools we've mentioned or if you have any questions about treating your patients with TMD.